guys, I'm Ben, and welcome to another episode of Epoch of Greatness. On these shows, we look at a particularly fruitful period for a band, and that can be artistically or commercially or both. In this episode, we're going to look at the relatively short but incredible career of the St. Louis, Missouri natives, Anacrusis. Anacrusis first formed in 1986, or thereabouts, I believe, with uh, Mike Owen on drums, John Emery on bass, Kevin Hydebreder on guitar, and main man and driving force of the band, Ken Nardi on guitar and vocals, with both guitars sort of trading off leads and rhythm parts. It was in 1986 that Anacrusis produced their first demo called Annihilation Complete, which became very popular in the underground. The demo was even voted best demo in 1987, uh, the Reader's Poll in the Mighty Metal Forces magazine. The band would later be included in that magazine's compilation album called Demolition Scream Your Brains Out, alongside bands like Leviathan, uh, Atrophy, and Australia's own Hobbs, Angel of Death. Awesome band, by the way. (laughs) The underground buzz that the band received around their demo and appearance on Demolition helped lead to them getting their first record deal with the English indie label Active Records and with the measly budget of $1,200, the band would deliver up their first full-length album released in 1988, the absolutely kick-ass Suffering Hour. So Suffering Hour would have a very raw and nasty production style, which was totally perfect for the music. It was essentially a slightly more refined version of their well-loved demo stylistically, as well as practically, choosing to re-record most of that demo for the album. The music itself was Anacrusis at their most brutal and unforgiving. This album is full of rampaging, full-throttle, unforgiving, just raw and nasty pure thrash songs like imprisoned rot and annihilation complete slash disembowelment for example perfectly highlight the band's top tier thrash bona fides however even at this early stage the band set themselves apart largely by the unique talents of ken nardi and his unique array of vocal deliveries Ken would employ his thrash bark as effectively and amazingly as anyone in the genre. He also had his tool bag, in his tool bag, one of the coolest ear piercing eagle shrieks in metal. Um, Very cool. And he would always drop it in at just the right moment to highlight some transition or phrase. However, the thing that really set Ken apart was his clean vocals, which Granted, are used sparingly on Suffering Hour, but they draw more from new wave and gothic vocal styles than your typical thrash fair, and it works perfectly to create a darkness and moodiness that really was unique to thrash at the time. Of course, 
This aspect would be explored in far greater depths going forward, but already amongst the semi-tech thrashing onslaught, um, this progressive sophistication was appearing. Songs like the awesome opener, Present Tense, Um, the progressive butcher's block. incredible a world to gain are particular highlights for me and highlight exactly what I'm talking about. Suffering Hour is an album that, while it does have a primitive production style, which I love actually, um, especially on this album, uh, is also an album that already hints at and at times patently points to a band heading in a more progressive direction, employing thrash at the more technical end of the spectrum and introducing it to goth and new wave melodies uh, made Suffering Hour an absolutely killer album and in my opinion, an absolute classic. However, I know a lot of the more straight ahead thrash lovers who love this album tend to drop off at this point. And if pure speed and aggression is all you want from thrash and, and, and metal in general, you know, I can understand why. However, Anacrusis had a lot of evolving to do and the confines of the genre or fan expectation weren't about to hold them back. So with that said, their first leap forward would come in the form of album number two released in 1990, Reason. On Reason, the sound that the band would become more known for would begin to be fleshed out here. Mind you, still in a way that feels at times like it's sort of finding its way in the dark. But from the very first moment of the album's terrific opener, Stop Me, you can hear that things have changed quite dramatically, and yet not in a way that feels forced or out of place. I think as far as band evolutions go, especially that depart from a well-established genre, Anacrusis had the most natural feeling one I can think of. While the thrash and heaviness is still very much there and really the foundation for everything, we also get the band growing ever more technical and progressive in their musical approach. The interplay between the instruments is more conversational, let's say, and dynamic with the guitars of Kevin and Ken feeding off each other in unpredictable ways and with the ever more present and interesting bass lines and tone of John Emery adding, you know, that, that extra flavor. Songs like Terrified show that the band can still attack with manic power, but again, the riffs are more technical than they were on Suffering Hour. Most bands, when they become more technical, tend to trade it out for their direct emotional impact, perhaps relying on more 
cerebral experience to induce enjoyment from the listener. For me, that approach often works. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I love technical metal. However, in the case of Anacrusis, it almost has the opposite effect. The technicality only seems to draw out the emotion intended in the songs and the interplay of the instruments only works to highlight the emotion felt in Ken's vocals. Now that being said, personally, even though I love all the Anacrusis albums, I do find that this album does feel like somewhat of a transitional album. And while it still rules, it's still fucking awesome, it doesn't feel quite as realized as the next two albums, which um, will take what they achieved on Reason to an even higher level. Songs like Stop Me, Afraid to Feel and Not Forgotten really show the direction the band was heading in and the influences that were driving Ken's writing. Reason is a fantastic technical progressive thrash album and while it is transitional in nature and has (laughs) terrible album art, I mean that's kind of a running thing with this band, except for Suffering Hour, that's really cool. Um, It's still definitely worthwhile checking it out and you know i love this album too it's it's awesome um maybe not as much as suffering hour but it's fantastic nonetheless and i highly recommend you go check it out and buy it during the tour for reason mike owen left the band to go join the u.s navy apparently due to frustrations over not having a u.s release for their albums and finding that their progress wasn't extending beyond the underground With his departure, the band would bring ex-Heaven's Flame member, which was Ken Nardi's previous band, uh, bring uh, called Chad Smith, not the Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers, different Chad Smith, um, but they'd bring him in on drums to replace Mike. Anyway, they would also finally sign with a US label in Metal Blade Records and finally get the chance to do a proper full-blown studio record, uh, studio recorded album, I should say. The result was their third full-length album, released in 1991, Manic Impressions. Manic Impressions would see Anacrusis make another leap forward, this time with the assistance of a proper studio session. Ken Nardi, who produced all their albums, with the exception of Suffering Hour, which also credits the band, the band and Jeff Johnson, um, Ken was able to flesh out his sonic vision for the band on this one. And that vision was a cold, clean and sterile sonic attack. I'm not sure if the purpose was to create a juxtaposition with the more emotive songwriting and delivery, but that's most definitely the effect. While the sound on this album is ultra clean and modern sounding, really surgical in its approach, the songs themselves are far more expressive and dynamic than the cold production presents. The interplay once again between the instruments has been ramped up even further and the precision and technicality is decisive and bludgeoning. Again, the vocal variations from Ken are even more, even further clarified and perfected here. And where Reason had felt like a sort of transitional album, Manic Impressions very much uh, feels like the band arriving at the destination. This confidence is fully exemplified in the band's choice to include the New Model Army cover of I Love the World, and as the second track on the album, no less. The way the band effortless, effortlessly, there's my prerequisite tongue twister for every fucking video, effortless, effortlessly, fuck's sake, I ripped the tongue out of my fucking head. Anyway, without effort <laughs> makes it a, a totally anacrusis song. You know, they take this cover and make it theirs. Um, and, you know, if you didn't know it was a cover, you'd easily believe it was an original. Um, it's top shelf stuff and illustrates how far the band had really evolved at this point 
Of course, the rest of the album is full of fantastic material, like the very next song, for example, Something Real, with its mid-paced, brooding, moody power that manages to be atmospheric and exciting and heavy at the same time, a skill that would be really one of the defining hallmarks of Anacrusis. amazing ability to create something that was prog progressive and even avant-garde, yet make it catchy, memorable, and emotive. A skill very few technical bands managed to achieve, especially without losing their heaviness in the process, which Anacrusis never did. Also, what's great is that Ken has never dropped any of his vocal approaches, always barking, shrieking, and his unique clean singing. Awesome. Manic Impressions, like the rest of the catalogue, both feels familiar and yet stands alone for its creative power, and for fans of progressive metal, this is a must-have. After touring for Manic Impressions, drummer Chad Smith would depart the band, and writing began for their fourth and final album. Replacing Smith was drummer Paul Miles, who would be the last Anacrusis drummer to date. With this lineup, the band headed back into the studio, and in 1993, the band's final statement would be released to the world, the incredible Screams and Whispers. Where Reason saw the band forming their new sound and Manic Impressions saw them fully arrive at it and embody it, Screams and Whispers sees the band fully master it. The songwriting, songwriting is honed to a streamlined perfection here, combining all the elements they'd been brewing throughout their career. The progression, heaviness, new wave and goth touches, instrumental interplay, and of course, Ken's fantastic emotive vocal delivery. Personally, this is my favorite Anacrusis album, and for my money, I'd say it's a perfect album. There are really no cracks in Anacrusis's formidable armor at this point. Opening the album with the instantly infectious and captivating Sound the Alarm, which has always been an absolute favorite of mine with its haunting vocal melodies and killer instrumentation, it's just an amazing song, great way to open the album. got sense of will follows and comes in driving hard with its cool dynamic riffing but then also opens up melodically with ken's fantastic moody vocals paul miles does a great job at fitting into the band by highlighting the rhythmic diversity while serving up the songs perfect while serving the songs perfectly serving them off a fucking platter to you um, Too Many Prophets rides on top of Emery's cool bass groove. Again, the bass tone and feel is always so important to the propulsion of this band's music. Another fantastic and memorable song. Then you've got Release, uh, which has a more personal and intimate feel and yet retains all the Anacrusis ingredients. 
It has a kind of dark emotional beauty to it that at times feels like a ballad, but musically it really isn't. It's a very unique and cool song and awesome stuff. Although that can pretty much be said for every Anna Cruz's song, actually. Next, you have Division, which sees the band throwing in some more unsettling weirdness and Ken doing a kind of spoken word verse that really works as a perfect just juxtaposition to the, um, the sort of more moody release. When, when the, you know, uh, wrong, so wrong part kicks in, it, it's just so satisfying too. Um, and then the disjointed guitar solo, it's awesome, very cool. Very cool stuff. Next, we've got tons of separation, which explodes with melodic drive and power. And once again, is the perfect synth synthesis between the band's fantastic thrash abilities and their gothic moodiness and progressive power. Also, this song is a perfect example of the extra orche orchestration that the band had begun introducing to their sound. Another totally unique experience and awesome song. The orchestration continues and gives off an almost regal power on the next track, Grateful, which is yet another album highlight. Absolutely love that one. Expressive, mid-paced riffs that eventually set in, settle into a doomy gothic vibe before exploding again. Again, unique and dynamic, the calling card of Anacrusis. We got next, A Screaming Breath uh, opens again with more pulsating bass grooves. Again, tapping into the more unsettling approach on this track. Probably my least favorite track on the album, but it's still fucking awesome. It's still great. Then it follows with My Soul's Affliction. And again, the band mixes haunting riffing with rhythmic diversity and power. This track scene really screams Voivod to me every time I hear it. I'm not sure if they were an influence, but, you know, really at this time, how could they not be? Um, for, especially for this kind of music, but I could really picture this song on, let's say, Dimension Hatros or probably even more like Nothing Face quite easily. And that's not, and you know, that's not a bad thing at all. <laughs> that's a good thing because I love those albums. Um, but don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're copying Voivod at all. It's still very much Anacrusis, but it just has that combination of unusual riffing and off kilter melody that is so familiar to that band. Another absolute killer song. Driven is next and again follows the pattern of hard riffing and emotive verses. Again, it seems effortless and like, um, you know, like the song really just sort of popped out, fully formed, you know. The last new song on the album is The Incredible Brotherhood. Here, Anacrusis takes the dark emotive waves to a lush and progressive peak. Um, by this point, you know, what you're getting on this album. And Brotherhood just does it all to the extreme. Orchestration pu pushed to the max, emotional impact ratcheted up, instrumental interplay and heaviness present and powerful, and Ken's dynamic vocal delivery. A remixed version of Release closes out the album, which is fine, but kind of unnecessary. But the album proper really closes out with Brotherhood, and it's a perfect final moment for this remarkable band that shows both what they're capable of as well as you know just how far they had evolved at that point screams and whispers should be considered an indisputable and indispensable classic by the metal community in my opinion however sadly it just never broke through to anything beyond underground love unfortunately this was the end of anacrusis as a recording band and they would break up soon after the release of screams and whispers over the years, they've had a handful of concert and festival one-off style reunion appearances, and even in recent years recorded a show in their hometown playing with all three drummers 
and through a huge portion of all four albums. But besides that, the era of Anacrusis has essentially ended. The members would all go off to do various other things, but most notably, um, and also most connected to Anacrusis, is the solo work of Ken Nardi. In 2014, during a time when the band had been playing some reunion shows, there was some talk of another album, but for various reasons, this fell through. Well, Ken had already written plenty of material that would have been on a new Anacrusis album, but also a huge amount of material that he sort of felt stood apart from that too. This would lead to Ken's first solo album, Dancing with the Past. This album has some great material and stuff that could easily have been on, uh, easily have been Anacrusis material post Screams and Whispers. And while I do love a lot of the songs, Opener, Unnecessary Evil is a great example, the album also has one big problem. It's too damn big, you know? There's really enough material here for three albums. And so, you know, that really means that, um, the only way to really process it, you know, is kind of in a piecemeal kind of way. It's just too big, uh, you know, and as someone who myself who loves an album experience, you know, I'm not one of these guys who goes on Spotify and, and listens to a playlist or some shit like that. You know, when I listen to music, I put on an album and I listen to the whole album al almost always. So um, for me, it's a bit of a drawback that, that you can't really do that with this album. Um, However, in 2021, Ken would bring out his next solo album, Trauma. Again, adding older songs meant for Anacrusis, as well as some re-recordings of Anacrusis songs as a bonus. But the new material is absolutely killer, and this album is much closer to what Anacrusis fans would be hoping for in a new album. Uh, Trauma was such a pleasant surprise, and I even know some Anacrusis fans who think this is better than anything the band ever did. It's a big call, and I'm not sure if I would go quite that far myself, but this is great, powerful, and memorable stuff, all written and produced and performed by Ken. Um, you know, I would say if you love Anacrusis and ha haven't checked out Trauma, definitely go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description for it. Anacrusis are one of many bands from that era that pushed the boundaries of the genre and created music that was unique and compelling, but really paid the price by remaining forever in the underground and inevitably coming to an end prematurely. Regardless of their longevity, the impact musically is profound and they will always have a place as one of my favorites, that's for sure. Anyway, guys, that's the Anacrusis Epoch of Greatness. Thanks for watching. Stay metal and see you next time.